talking about this for you know a week or whatever, and now we can finally see them. Uh, because remember that writing HTML was pretty painful when we did it just inside of a string. Um, let's see if I can find that example. It was the historical table. Remember how we got that CSV file and then we built the HTML like this? This is a really painful way of writing HTML. Uh, because it's kind of hard to see the HTML inside of our Go, because it's all, like in my case, it's all in green, because that is indicating a string. But, but it's hard to see the structure. And then also, anybody remember the other problem with it? Yeah, this could potentially be dangerous because this string could contain uh, a script tags, and then when this was embedded into the HTML and we loaded it, it would cause our browser to run those scripts. So we want to escape them to make them safe. Uh, and so that would be tedious to do in strings, and it would make it uh, it'd be very easy to forget to do one. And so uh, a better alternative is sort of to inverse this. So the idea here is that I have Go code. Inside the Go code, I have a string. Inside the string, I have HTML. We want to invert that relationship. So I want to make the primary thing the HTML. And then only when I need to, go back to Go. Okay? <clears throat> and that's what a template allows you to do. So there are two template libraries in the, in the, in the standard libs here. Um, so on GoDoc, you can go to the Go standard packages and see them all listed. Uh, there's text slash template, and we'll start there. So down here, text slash template, okay? And there's also HTML slash template, which is up here somewhere. Okay? Now we're going to use HTML template, but it's based on text template. All it does is, is it's more geared towards HTML. So what it does is it's more intelligent than the text template. It sees that I've opened a new tag or whatever and knows how to escape the strings that I've put into it. Probably. It sees that I'm inside of a script tag and knows I'm doing JavaScript now. And the escape conventions for JavaScript are different than the ones for HTML. Um, but it's all based on text template. It works exactly the same way. Uh, it's just is used for making HTML instead of just regular text. Um, and they tell you that right now. To generate HTML, I put C HTML template. But they, the way they work is identical. Uh, and so the way the template is, is basically we have text, and then we'll have these double curly braces. And when you start a double curly brace, that's indicating now go into code, mm -hmm. do stuff in code, and then come back out with the, the closing the two right curly braces. Okay? Um, and so it has all of these uh, definitions for things you can do inside the curly braces. Mm -hmm. And we'll see some examples of those. Uh, but the basic idea is that you have plain text, and then when you see those double curly braces, now you're inside of uh, Go code, kind of. Uh, and then you can do stuff inside of it. And that's how we can make HTML. So let's see an example of that. Um, I'm going to create a new folder, day three in week two. And then inside there, we'll add template example. And then How do we create a template? Well, first, it should be a separate file. So we say new file, and now I'm going to create a template file. And so this we'll call I'll call it TPL for template. Dot, and I'm going to use the extension Go HTML. The extension is up to you actually. It's not defined what the extension has to be, but Go HTML is a good one. <clears throat> so what we're saying is this is an HTML file with Go things inside of it. Okay. But the primary sort of our primary language here is HTML, so we just write doctype HTML, and we're writing HTML, right? The neat thing about it, if you use that extension is it click down here, it says HTML, and then parentheses go. So the Go Plus plugin knows about templates. So you get nice formatting, but... <coughs> Does the edit plugin work when you're at this point? The what? Edit for HTML. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think it's doing HTML. It seems to, like it knows what title is. Yeah, okay. sure, but HTML title tag. Yeah. I don't think that was very helpful. But <laughs> uh, 
It does work. Um, so we have a body. So we're just going to have testing here. Okay. Whoops, I forgot it. So I just wrote, this is regular HTML. You guys should know that, hopefully. <clears throat> and then I'm, what I, to, to use that template, you have to use these functions down here. So, and once again, trying to find this can be a little uh, tricky. This, in this case, it's really short, so it wasn't hard to find it. But um, we have sort of different approaches to do this. Um, the one we're going to use for now is this parse files. And what that does is you give it a bunch of file names, and notice the, what does this mean? Very bad. Right, so I can give it one or more. I mean, you can give it a bunch of files. Uh, and it returns a template. And then the template has all these methods, and in particular it has execute. It takes our friend the writer, and then we give it data, which we'll see in a second. And it, what we'll do is it'll take that template and uh, write it to the writer, okay? So let's see an example of that. Um, so I want to create, I want to uh, get the template, and so I use template.parse files, right? Because that was what it was here. And then I give it, what am I going to pass to it? The name of the file, right? Which is uh, tpl.gohtml. Um, and that should parse my template. So let's see if that works. Uh, I'm going to do something I almost always do. That disables the time on the log. I just don't like seeing the time. <laughs> They'll set flags and just, you know how I normally have the date and then the message? That gets rid of the date. Uh, there's just a message now. Is this the wrong template library? That is the wrong template library. That's funny that it did that. Uh, text us. So let's see what this does. Where are we? So day three. Template example. Go install, and then run template example. Okay. So we get some stuff. That's whatever the template struct has in it. Okay. The ampersand is a pointer to a template. You can you can see in the um, in here what what it contains it contains a parse tree. You can go look at that. It has a name, a bunch of other stuff. Not significant because we don't use that. What we use are these methods. Okay. So to to render the template to cause that template to draw, we have to write it right. So we have execute, and that takes a writer, uh, that takes a writer. So what's a writer for, to print to our screen? Uh, I want to render this template just to the terminal. How do I do that? Fatal in? OS standard out. Uh, OS dot standard out, remember? It's all coming back. Um, and then I'm just going to pass nil for now for the data. And this can return an error. It can return an error if your template's invalid and some other conditions, um, but we shouldn't get an error from this. So reinstall and run it again, and there we go. It rendered our HTML, right? So in this case, we didn't use anything special about a template. It's just a file. So we could have done that with IOCopy. I mean, uh, so the nice thing about a template is it allows us to embed things inside of it. Can you so copy uh, your code? And you're saying that this should be in, uh, our template should be in a separate folder? Keep all our templates in a separate folder? Templates are files. You can put them wherever you want to put them. Yeah, but generally speaking, is it like good practice to say, here's my folder and it has all my templates? Like, here's my yeah, template I mean, you folder. probably don't want to just have them all sitting in that same folder, just get messy. But, you know, you could have the assets folder have them, you could have a, spe a separate folder. I mean, it's not like Rails. There aren't like conventions for specific ways you have to do it. 
it's up to you to come up with a good way to do it. Um, okay, so in here, this is why we use templates, is I can replace test here with the double curly braces. Okay, the reason why they're double curly braces is those are unlikely to appear in real test. Uh, and so it's unlikely to cause you issues. Um, and the way this works with, with the template, if we look it up here, is there's a bunch of different things we could do in here. Uh, and, and like I said, they're described these actions, uh, arguments and pipelines, uh, and they talk about what they are. So a pipeline is gonna be like a variable. Uh, and then you can do ifs, uh, you can do ranges, which we'll see. Uh, you can do other templates, um, and a bunch of other things. The arguments, as far as what that pipeline could be, are described here. So they can be literals. Boolean, string, character, integer, floating point, imaginary, perplex, constant, and ghost syntax. So I can put a number in here. I can say five. So I put a five inside of my H1. And see it prints five here. Okay? That's not super interesting because that's basically, I could have just done that before. What if I do five plus five? Does this even allow me to do that? No. Instead of all that stuff, dot. Think of dot here as like, you know on the command line, dot means the current directory. That's kind of what it means here. It means the current sort of uh, data that was passed to it. So now, so I'm printing the dot. If I render this, I think we'll see no value. That's something it put in there. Um, and that's because I didn't pass anything here. I put nil. So if I pass something here, if I put, say, the number 10, um, then, well, i got to reinstall. And then run it. Now I see 10. So it will now put, where I use that dot, anything I pass into the template function here. Okay. Everybody following that? So this is where I would do my math, right? So you should keep your code, like logic code, inside of the Go file, and your sort of presentation, your just description of the, the form over here inside of your template. So your template should not have logic in it. It shouldn't have that five times five. That should be in the Go code, okay? All it should have in here is, are things like the dot. Now occasionally we use if and stuff because that's important to the presentation. For example, um, like, for example, with the range, I might want to print some, several rows, okay? And so that's part of the presentation of the data. Uh, now, making the rows, I would do in the Go file. And so, let's see how we can do that, so I can show you range. Um, so what would, I, what would I create here if I want to make a list of things? A slice, right? So now I have, I'm passing it five numbers, and I want to draw each of those separately in my template, okay? So suppose instead of H1 here, you know, I have a UL, whoops, 
And then I can use range. So let's go look at range, because it describes it right here. Range pipeline, and then end over here. So you say range dot, dot is the current, is the thing I'm passing in. And then end. Normally these are right next to each other. I just put spaces so you can see them a little better. Um, and then what happens is uh, that inside of, inside of the two, the dot has now been changed to the current item in the list. So now dot is one or two or three. So typically how you'd build this, you'd say li, right? And then inside here, what would I put here? Dot. Dot. Okay. So let's see what that does. So you're ranging over a dot, and then and then uh, each each uh, iteration is the current one. That's the next dot. Yeah. So I just printed one through five, each of them with an li. Everybody following what we're doing here? Um, and so this is a much cleaner way to build HTML than the way we saw before. Because there's, it's all, it's pretty much all HTML and then a little bit of extra stuff to make it fill it in. Okay. Um, these are similar to like mustache templates and there's a bunch of other templating languages out there. I just want to give you the idea of templates. Uh, you did that, mustache a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and these are similar, I think it uses the same. But the, what's inside of them is a little different, they have different format. Um, and so that's how you do your range. Uh, the else block on a range is if it was empty. That's sometimes useful. So if you wanted to do that, uh, you might say uh, no items, right? And then if we went over here and got rid of these and just had an empty list, we could see that poor nil. I, I don't know. Let's, we'll see what nil does. So we got no items. So that's a very common pattern in HTML where, oh, if you have an empty list, you want to show a special message. Because otherwise, users look are really confused, right? They see an empty table, and they're like, "What? Did it not work?" You know. Um, so what happens if we do nil? It may do the same thing. Yeah, same exact thing. So uh, that that is a good point because the step over here is more forgiving than go is in general. Uh, so like, notice that all the lack of types and stuff. Uh, so the dot here. You know it's nil, like you couldn't do a range nil in regular code, but you can do it in a template. Okay. It's more forgiving. So the other common thing we do, so we saw using a single value, and we saw range, right? And we saw how it changes the current thing. The other common thing we do, or probably more common, is we pass in a struct. Because normally you have more than one thing here. Like, for example, I might have I might want to be able to change the title of my page. So what I would do is I'd create a type page struct. And in here I'd have title, string, body, string, or something. And then inside of here I'd create that struct and I'd set the title to my title. Okay? And then over here we say dot title. Okay? And that will get that field of the struct. So it goes to dot, which is that struct, and then tries to get the field from it. Okay? Um, and so that should print our title. Let's get rid of this. Uh, and see what that does. So now it fills it in with my title. So if I change that title to something else, it, it'll change it over there. So my title two. Reinstall, run it, now it says my title two. Okay. We didn't change the template. The template is the template. We changed the data that goes into the template. Can you copy that go over to extra scratch thing? Just erase it there. I mean that example is not going to work without the template. Got it. Um, so that's basically what we do with these templates. And like I said, there are more things described here. Um, and it you know, goes through all of the, the details. You can have dot, dot, dot. Um, 
you can assign to a variable. So you can say dollar $x uh, equals or whatever dot something, and then use that later in your template. That's pretty, I mean, I don't do that very often. Uh, you can also create functions that get called, and this is the pipeline thing. And so, like this. So this is a function that's part of the template. And you say print f, and then it can take arguments. The arguments are space separated, not comma separated. Um, and that would call format.printf, printf, get the result, and pl plug it into the template. You can also pipe them with the pipe character. Uh, so take a string, pipe it to printf. What it does is it makes it the second argument over here. Um, some of that can get pretty hairy, but I just wanted to show you the, uh, how it works. I, I don't know. I, I kind of think if you're doing a lot of this, maybe, maybe this should be written in your Go code, not in the template. Kind of too much inside of the template. Um, I guess kind of hard to read. But you can do it. And that means you can define your own. These are the ones that come with it. Uh, to define your own is described down here. So we'll move over to that. Bumps added the element to the argument after the template's function map. Let's try that. I'm going to change something here. Instead of saying parse files, I'm going to say dot new. So all I did was uh, make a new template. Oh, I think it takes a name. So the reason I did that was I needed to find the functions before I parse. So I can say, yeah. So you'd say like uh, TPL equal TPL dot funks, and then you'd give it this funk map. Uh, so we'll just copy that. Well, actually, we can just do this. And so this is a map of string, and then you'll give it a function. So I can say my custom func. And the rules are for the function, uh, each function must either have a single return value or two return values. Uh, and so let's just make it not take anything and return a string. Um, so, so now I just returned a string. And what this does is it makes it so that I can use this inside of my template. So now over here I can say, I don't know if dashes will actually work. Let's find out. Yeah, you can't use dashes, so don't do that. <laughs> So it called that function. And so that's sometimes useful. Uh, suppose you wanted to like get the currently logged in user, you might use something like that. Um, but generally, you should pass in the data like this. This is easier to understand and create a custom function. Uh, so these custom functions are sometimes useful. Like you might have uppercase or something, and then you can use that. In I'll show you that just so you can see it. Right, and this time I'll take an argument, let's call it a, a str string, and it will return strings dot two upper. And now I can use it over here. I can say uppercase dot title. Now I'll call the uppercase function with the value of dot title. So now yeah. 
two of them. And uh, so there's other things we can do with templates. Like I said, it's exhaustively detailed here. Uh, the last thing I'll show you with that is sometimes we, like I said, it, it's safe, it'll escape it. So maybe we should see how it does that. But um, sometimes we don't want to have it escape it. But let's, let's see how it escapes it, and then we can see how we can fix it. So I add body in that page struct. Um, so I want to say, hello world, and then I want to make a script in here, and just to show you that you can't break it. Now, if, the, if we were just using a string, uh, it would it would run alert i. But we're not using a string. We're using a template. So I say dot body, and that's going to take the contents of body and put it right there. Okay. Oh, see what it did. Why did it leave it in there? Because I'm using text template, not HTML template. Right? And that's the difference. Now you see the page, it escaped all the characters and made it safe. So you would just see hello world and then, I mean, I guess I'll show you that. see the literal uh, characters up there. But it didn't run the script, right? It just put it as text. Because we escaped it. We replaced the, bracket, the angle brackets with the uh, ampersand less than. So it doesn't run the script. If we wanted to, we could wrap this. So this is just a string. So if we go look at uh, the HTML template, um, We can wrap the the value, and so instead of a string, it's so they call this the type strings. We can wrap it with HTML. Um, so does that does, do people remember how to do that? How do I convert a string into that HTML type? How do I convert a string into a slice of bytes? Uh, you just cast it. Yeah, you'd, you'd say, right? So how do I convert a string into an HTML type? Cast it. Exactly, I say, well, right. you say, template.html. And so now, On that, what it what it does is it the template library sees that it's a typed string, uh, so it knows it's an HTML string, and so therefore it, it won't escape. At least that's what it's supposed to do. Oh, sorry. You need to change it up here too. Does that make sense? Yeah. And now I've left it as is. So if you need to put HTML into your template, like actual HTML, you don't want to escape it, then you use that template.html. And I think because we gave it a type HTML, I think we might be able to do this, but let's see if it works. Yeah, cool, that worked. Uh, that's actually really neat that that actually works. So I chain a type up here, and I can just use a string literal, and it knows how to do the conversion. Um, any questions about that? OK, so maybe we should do some examples. So we saw parse files. Parse blob does a whole directory. Uh, and it does so using. Path slash file path 
Uh, there's a glob function in here. Glob returns the names of all files matching the pattern. Um, so it's things like slash user, slash star, slash bin, slash. Uh, you can play around with that if you want. But that would give you a whole directory of files. Okay. Uh, but we only get one file. And then we use execute. Execute template. So if you did that whole directory, execute template lets you choose which template you want to render. So in this example, execute is just like running execute template. And then I think it's the second argument, but let's look it up. Um, yeah, it's the second one, the name of the template. And so it's just like writing. Okay. So if you had more than one, if you had a whole bunch of files, if you had a parse files here, that's how you can pick which one you want to use. Um, and then actions, some of functions and stuff. So the two problems we can work on, creating a HTTP application that returns hello world. So if I go to slash, I want it to show hello world. But I want you to do that using a template. And then you want to make it, you know, we want to modify that program so that if you go to a slash or any URL on it, it shows the currently selected URL. So we made these programs yesterday. We're just modifying them to use a template. Okay? And you can add HTML or whatever you want to it, but I just want to see that you can do that. And then third program, that historical financial CSV thing that we built that big table, I want us to modify that program to use a template to generate the HTML instead of the string building. Okay? Everybody understand? So those are the programs we 